Hi, you're watching Adorama TV. My name is David Langan. I am a documentary lighting cameraman, and today I'd like to talk to you about macro photography. And I'd like to show you, using macro lenses, how you can open up so many more possibilities. There are many macro lenses across all price ranges. I've chosen two here that I'd like to use. Uh, this is a L-series Canon 100mm macro lens. Um, it's a mid-price lens that uh, delivers excellent picture quality and gives you that lovely Canon warm look. And here is my particular favorite lens, which is a Hasselblad 50mm macro lens that comes with a series of boosters that allow you to incrementally go up the focal length up to 200mm in different sizes. This makes it a very, very versatile lens. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about. I use macro photography in my work to help illuminate the storytelling process. Uh, for example, in science or crime documentaries, it's a great way to uh, illustrate the detail or the evidence. And even simple stuff like uh, like paper or scripts or computer screens, you can bring a beauty to simple objects. So for example, here is a, 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 a keyboard for a laptop. And I'm going to try and show you how you can bring some elements of beauty to this object. In terms of lighting, you're in a Gulliver's world where you can almost do anything you want because you're immersed in a world that isn't relevant to the bigger outside picture. So here we go, let's try and turn on the internal light of the screen, bring it up to a level, and get a focus. So at the moment, I'm on a basic 50mm macro lens. I'm going to turn on a backlight, which is a nice blue roomy backlight here, which when I turn off all the other lights, you can see that it's giving me a nice edge on the foreground. I then got my nice little Aladdin light here, which is a wonderful little thing, which I can then change the intensity. I can also change the color temperature. It's nice to contrast. The trick here, really, when shooting with macro lenses, is to try always to shoot along the oblique. Never shoot square on or flat to the object because you never get the benefit of the fall off of the macro lens. So the trick is oblique, down the line and get as much of, a, of an angle as possible to get that lovely fall off. So here we have uh, an image that's 50 mil. Uh, I am basically, I think, wide open. My ISA setting is, on uh, my C300 here, is, I'm gonna put it at 850, which is what it's supposed to be. And there we go, that's the end image. So I'm gonna show you, you can also do you can travel down the, down the line with the image by just pulling focus to give you some sort of motivation. Either fingers coming in to hit the keypads can, be, can motivate your pull focus or just giving you some action in an otherwise static frame. It's quite nice as well. So it's quite a nice cut point to come in and out on the end of a focus pull. So there you go. So now I'm going to show you what happens when you change lenses. A booster that is 16 plus. So this is this means my minimum depth of field is now gone from 50 mil macro, which is about 17 or 18 inches, to much much closer. So. I'm now in effect on the very, very foreground of the keyboard here. And you can see that the, the line of focus, the focal plane, is very, very finite. Literally, it's in millimeters, as you can see there. So there you go. So that, that allows me to now have a, a, a very, very fine um, depth of field on that lens. If I was to increase the f-stop to f20, say f11, and I'll cheat it for you so I can actually just do it using the ISO rating. So let's go to 6400. 
So 6,000, a bit more maybe, 8,000. But in effect, what you've done there is you've increased your focal length. So the foreground's sharp and the background is certainly not soft, it's not sharp, but you can see that you've got a greater, greater depth of field, which is, which is useful sometimes to illuminate both the context of what you're shooting and the detail of what you're shooting. You're not always trying to have a completely soft image. Um, so that's one way of doing it, use, using, using lighting, using your iris, and or these days on modern cameras, using your ISO rating. I've added one more booster to, to the 50mm macro lens. It's a 60mm additional booster that, uh, as you can see from this picture, uh, the previous image is, is, is much softer. Uh, the reason for that is that the depth of field um, is even more foreshortened and the minimum, minimum focal uh, distance is even, even tighter to the lens. So I have to bring everything closer. You're working within a few inches of the front of the lens. But as you can see there, hopefully on this image, you really are now in the world of the keyboard. What I've done here is I've reduced the line of attack to almost on the deck. So it's actually almost shooting along the line of the keyboards. I've cheated the keyboard up slightly because I'm trying to get the line to be in the middle of the, of the macro lens, uh, which means I can't get the lens lower than that. It's actually touching the, the, the deck. So I've cheated the keyboards up. As you can see now, I can travel and choose to start or be anywhere down that line of keyboards. So it's quite a nice shot. And again, because I'm shooting wide open, the depth of field is infinitesimal. It's like millimeters. So when you travel, you have this kind of wave of softness before the point of focus and after the point of focus. And as you travel down it, you get a lovely soft rippling effect, uh, which is again your pull focus. I'm going to just change the lighting here a bit. And again, feel free to do almost anything you want with lighting because this is, a, this is your own world, the world of macro. Right, so that's kind of funky. It might be a bit too much, but you can light for beauty. In this case, I've got uh, a lot of a, a very strong blue backlight, which is, I'm just doing because it looks beautiful. Uh, I could take that down to get rid of the color blue and just have it kind of purely and simply illuminated so you can see what it is, but it's your choice. I quite like a little bit of that blue. Maybe not quite so much as I had before. Just maybe light the foreground like that to see what it is I'm looking at. And then again, so here's the effect I was telling you about, which is to do you pull through the line, and you get a nice rolling focus effect. And if you want to see more detail, i.e. a greater depth of field, I'm going to cheat on this particular occasion, rather than up in the lighting level, which is probably the preferred way of doing it. I'm wide open at the moment, so I'm going to go down to, say, F11 and cheat my ISO to the point where it's kind of lit at about 4,000 ISO. And you can see, now you know it's a keyboard, you can see the entire range of the keyboard. The focus is allowing you to tell you more about the context of where you are and you can see more detail. To have greater control over your image, you have to understand the relationship between the three things, which is the ISO rating, the iris control, and the lighting levels. Balancing and changing those three things give you control over the look of the image that is either going to be about the context, the geography, where you are, the detail of what it is you're looking at, or simply maybe just a beautiful image that stands alone as it is. All these elements play a part in the storytelling process. You can subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos and let us know what you think by commenting, sharing and liking this video. You can stop by the Adorama Learning Centre for more great tips and tricks. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service.
Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use AdoramaPix.com.